you are watching this video right now, I believe that you are having something like this in your own Photoshop right now. Or you have watched the first part of this video where we learn how to pick colors and how to just fill in or block in the basic colors. Well, in this one, we are going to learn how to apply the shadows and I'm going to make sure I take out some time to break down the ways of applying shadows so that you guys can really understand how to apply shadows. Now, in the previous video I did, I just showed you guys how to just apply the shadows and the highlight. Well, I'm really going to point out something for you guys in this part that it's really going to help you paint shadows and highlight. In latest portrait I paint, which is some of the portrait you see at the beginning of this video, I try to take out some things while painting those portraits because there are some things you really need to understand when painting the portrait you have to apply what you see in reality and mix it up with the portrait you are painting now that would really help you painting a perfect portrait but it will help you understand how you need to paint the shadows and the highlight of the portrait now most of us just put in the shadows and the highlight but not really knowing that the shadows and the highlight it's the main part of painting a portrait because you use the shadows and the highlights to build the 3d forms of the face now if you really don't understand those parts of the shadows and highlight then whatever it is you are painting is just a joke so first most people always make use of the soft brush while applying the shadows and a highlight well in most cases it's okay it's going to help you blend easily and some other stuff but if we come to the normal sense of painting a portrait digitally you don't have to make use of a soft brush while applying the shadows and the highlight come to think of it have you ever been to an artist shop that is the traditional artist have you ever been to their shop when they are painting a portrait whenever they are painting a portrait they don't make use of a soft brush don't think that we only have a soft brush in digital arts and so but we also have soft brush when we do traditional painting i have actually experienced those stuff because i've done some traditional painting before over the years back and some time when you go to their shops when the paint or their studio when the paint or portrait they always try to make use of a hard brush because of the what the edges now i might leave a link in the description to some artists who paint just like who paint using the traditional method but i really i'm not really sure about that but i'm just going to try but to my own experience i'm going to break down the painting of shadows and highlight for you guys in this part so that it's really going to be awesome for you to understand how to paint shadows and highlight now by the end of this series you will find out that or you might find out that this portrait i'm painting in this series might not really be a satisfied portrait because i'm not really after that painting a satisfied portrait but what i'm after in this series is just for you guys to grab something that is really going to be helpful in all over your painting because if you have been watching most of my videos i have break down most steps that it's really going to help you to paint a better portrait but with this you are really going to go from if you are in 50 percent before but i'm giving you a well assurance that you'll be going up to the 90 percent of painting a portrait which remaining the 10 percent is just for you to know how to add some kind of fonts to your portrait well enough of the talking let's just get right into applying the shadows and the highlight now before i go into applying the shadows and the highlight i would like us to take a look at the reference now this is the part where i really want to break down everything for you guys to understand first i'm going to create a new layer above and i'm going to hit the b key on my keyboard to grab the brush too and i'm just going to grab the sketch brush for now and try to pick um a reddish color from here so that you can clearly see what I am doing. And I'm going to try to leave a link to this Colorus plugin 
down below so you should try to check it out but if by any means i couldn't leave that make sure to leave a comment and the video so that i can share the link maybe in the next part of this video or maybe at the ending of so on now when trying to paint a shadows i've already shown you guys how to understand the light the directions of the light and so on but this is one thing i really want to point out for you guys now look at all these edges right here now for you to know that this nose is at the top of the face it's because of all these edges that's right here and for you to know that there is a bone on the nose it's because of all these edges right here now come to think of it how can you achieve those edges when you are trying to paint your shadows and highlight so people always say make use of the hard brush to paint your shadows and highlight so that you will be able to keep those edges well i'm really going to tell you making use of the hard brush to paint your shadows and highlight does not really guarantee that you are going to get these kind of edges and so on you can make use of the soft brush and you still arrive at something like this now the only difference between making use of the soft brush to paint your shadows and highlight and making use of the hard brush and painting your shadows and highlight is that your edges are really going to be hard that is if you make use of the soft brush but if you make use of the hard brush your edges are really going to be soft so that is just the difference now applying all the shadows and highlights to get something like this you need to understand this which is just the one basic thing which you really need to understand why painting a shadows and highlight which is contrast contrast is very very important when painting a shadows and highlight how can you tell that this is a shadow and how can you tell that this is a highlight because of the contrast let me really show you that now let me take this away from here if you get to see the places that you call the shadows or we call the shadows you get to see that they are darker than the places we call the highlight just like this part it's darker than what this part and we call this part the highlight and we call this part the shadows the same thing is going on here we call this part the shadows and we call this part the highlight why because here is having lots of contrast and it's very dark than this part here is so much bright now if you get to look at this part here has a lot of contrast which is right here and this part is having a less contrast now you need to put that in mind when painting the shadows and highlight contrast matters a lot it's just for you to take out time to build your shadows more and more by adding more contrast to it then you will be able to build those shadows and highlight and another thing i, I would really like to let you guys know is when painting a portrait and painting the shadows and highlight think of the bone it is very important in painting a portrait now think of the bone if you are touching your nose the bones and the muscle i mean to say if you are touching every part of your face you get to know that you have some certain bone in some certain area making that place to what come up now most people always make use of the of anatomy of the face and so on it's really helpful if you get to understand the anatomy of the face it's really helpful but most times i always say that you don't really need to go into learning about those anatomy stuff before you start painting a portrait perfectly no it really just depends on your mindset but the anatomy stuff is just going to help speed up the stuff for you but I really don't do that anatomy stuff about painting a portrait because I really don't know. I just hate stuff that stress me so much, taking out something from me when I'm supposed to be doing another thing. Like I just concentrate on painting the portrait more than going into the anatomy part. Do though I do watch videos on anatomy, but I really don't pay more attention to all those stuff. I only just try to grab some ideas and I quickly go back into painting a portrait and I get to understand some cool stuff. Now let's get to see why this part of the nose is like this. Now we have something like a muzzle right here that is what bringing that nose up the same thing it's applying to every part so you should always remember now when you are moving from this part here to this part if but when we are looking at this portrait right now we can find out that this part is kind of like flat it's just a straight 
um just like let's just say a straight road like this but it's not straight because when you look at it closely you find out that what there is kind of like a, a stop right here making this part coming up or a little bit bigger than what this part now if we really get to look this part you get to see that what it goes this way just like that but not like this it goes this way just like it goes down and when it's coming to this part it goes up like this and goes down again why because there is a bone in that part so you have to take note of that that is how that is what you really need to put in mind when painting the shadows and highlights now if you this is really difficult for you to understand always try to do this anywhere you try to see a demarcation or something like this always try to put it it will really help you understand painting your shadows and your highlights more better and also put the contrast in mind then lastly towards something that is going to kill the shadows and the highlights for you it's making use of the hard brush i'm really really going to recommend that and i'm going to show you guys how to make use of the hard brush right now now when you go down to the neck you can see that we have muzzles right here right we have here and we have here now there is muzzles there showing that that part of the neck it's coming up why this side of the neck is going down which enables us to know that what this part of the neck is the front and this part of the neck is the back and finally the thing that just make everything to be clear to us is the contrast which is right here we are having more contrast here and we are having less contrast here i really hope this my little explanation it's really going to be helpful to you guys so let me know what you think if it's really helpful, helpful to you guys just leave a comment down below and if it's not i'm going to take out some time and break down another ways of painting shadows and highlight but i just really feel that this is really going to be a step for you guys to start painting your shadows and your highlight so now that we really understand how to paint shadows and the highlight let's go back into our main painting document now before I start before you start doing this remember you feel your color on a separate layer which is very important now most people feels like whenever like those people say saying that they always prefer painting on one layer i'm going to tell you stop painting on one layer no matter how good you are no matter how better you are stop painting on one layer because nobody is perfect and sometimes you just have to make a mistake the only thing i'm going to tell you is that you can merge your layers in order for you to keep your layer part clean or not to keep it messy and sometimes the best thing for you to do is just for you to group your layers that is really going to be helpful to you now those people who really believe in painting on one layer is they make use of this option called the lock transparency in photoshop i know most of you have, might have not heard of this or know about this or might have heard of it but not making use of it it's another type of masking in photoshop that is very very easy now with the lock transparency when you click on the lock transparency button up here it will enable you to what paint on that layer but you won't paint outside everything you do stays within sorry about that everything you do stays within that layer but to me i call this bullshit you can do this when you when you are at the final level of your painting that is what you are doing is just for fun not for the main painting itself so i would advise you guys always make use of a new layer so right now before applying the shadows and the highlight i'm going to create a new layer above the skin layer and i'm going to right click and set that to clipping mask so that it's going to mask that particular layer whatever i paint in there it's going to remain there now i want to pick out something for you guys most people will tell you once you pick your colors play around with the colors like making use of the hue saturation to adjust them and so on well you can do that if you wish but me i always do anything color as long as i pick the colors from the skin tune i always do anything colors at the end part of my painting so i modify the colors and i do whatever things which i want to do and of which i'm going to show you guys so to start applying the shadows and the highlight right click and select the hard round brush which is right here now if you can't find this if you have downloaded my brush set and you can't find this in yours it's pretty easy it's very easy to get you can just 
make use of the general brush in photoshop and you're going to get it but i'm going to try as much as i can to leave a link in the description where you are going to get this particular brush then maybe at the ending of the whole series i'm going to give out my brush for free the whole brush pack which i've been using this pack in particular i'm going to give it out for free that contains about 34 or 38 brushes i really can't tell the numbers that it is but as we keep going i'll give out the brush little by little but you can make use of the hard run pressure or pack city brush in photoshop as the default because they almost work the same way so i'm going to grab that brush if you grab the brush you see that what it's working with the opacity the harder you press the thicker it's going to the thicker line it's going to create for you now with this brush i'll be using it to apply the shadows and the highlight and if you are making use of a mouse no need to worry you can just set your opacity somewhere around 50 percent and leave the flow at 100 percent that is if you wish to so now that i have grabbed the brush on a new layer i will have to what, pick this color and not the darkest tag because we are going to do that later so now start using your eye to pick out the place that you have shadows and you start applying those shadows so right now i will start from the forehead and start applying those shadows that we have right here and as you keep going always try to increase and decrease the size of your brush in most cases as you can see i'm trying to fully carve out the shape of the head with the shadows now you can know there is something like a bone there that is this core so i'm trying to carve that out in my own portrait but i'm not going to cover up all this part because i'm still going to do that when i am blending so coming down to the nose i already leave a kind of a little line right here to give it the nose demarcations and so on so i'm just going to apply that right here just something like around that and I'm gonna repeat the same thing right here and we have a little bit of it here so i'm just going to fill out all this place with it and we have a little here as well i'm just going to put that so we have a little shadows at this uh, well you can apply the shadows any way you want to apply it but just make sure that you're trying to follow the way it is on the portrait because i'm still going to show you guys how to blend the shadows mix everything to, in a way that it's really going to be better and try to match with what you're having on your reference photo
all right so now we are done with the shadows and this looks so nasty i know but we are going to fix all this stuff so now that we are done with the shadows it's time for us to start applying the highlight so now repeat the same thing and you can put this on a new layer in order to prevent mistakes for you guys just to create a new layer create a clipping mask and that is it but i'm still going to put this on the same layer so you guys just see what i do so that you don't really have any mistakes while doing that so i'm just going to start applying the light so this is how it is right here. now you can see that there is a little bit of transition right here from the dark to the light and so on forming the mid tone at this part right there so we are still going to follow that same process and a little bit of um um a reminder to you guys if you download this document right now and you are making use of it i will advise you guys to take the resolution down because i'm making use, i'm making use of a 600 resolution as you can see right here so really don't know how powerful your pc can be you can decrease that or you can continue making use of it in order for it not to slow down your work so right now i'm just going to just apply some of the shadows right here the highlights right here but i'm trying to see something so at this point we are not going to make use of this highlight because this is the final highlight of everything so what i'm going to do i'm going to hold down odd and peek on the mid tone which is right there and I will just go up a little bit from here and make it a little bit lighter. So this is something like that is good. So we can make use of this, to apply the final lights in everything. So let's just go and let's start applying the highlights right here. So we have from here to just so. And we have here and we also have a little bit of here. And if you can't get that is if you're making use of this um, if you're making use of this document and you can't get this exact color you can grab from the, um, the hex code right here so I'm going to double click here so that it's going to be clear for you guys to see d99 e76 <coughs> So right now I'm done applying the shadows and the highlight and this looks so much nasty right now but don't worry we are going to 
fix all this so after watching this video to the ending i hope this is where you are having right now and this if this is where you are having right now just keep it cool save it and i'm going to show you guys how to blend in the next video i don't want to go into blending in this part so that you guys can really concentrate on just applying the shadows and the highlight and you are going to have a lot of time to practice on what you just learn so guys take time practice on the shadows and the highlight understand everything i have just showed you guys in this video and try to implement it when applying your own portrait now as you can see right now we've not been able to blend but all you can see you can you can show out the bones on this portrait you can see the bones perfectly building up the faces of the shapes the building up the shapes of the faces coming out little by little making it so much nice for you once you keep painting so if you're having that kind of a flat portrait when painting the shadows and highlight just try to remember everything i have told you guys in this video and it's really going to help you guys so that brings us to the end of this part of the video so thank you guys for watching and make sure to stay tuned for the next video and if you've not subscribed yet make sure to hit the subscribe button and not just the subscribe button ring the bell icon so that you won't miss any new video i will post i will posting every week so finally i've gotten the name for the channel and i'm gonna relate that with some of you guys but i'm going to post the changing of the name of the channel to i'm um, done with this series of videos so when i'm done with this series of video i'm going to change the name of the channel that is going to be a whole lot of a new thing because everything it's kind of like going to change so on because we're having a brand color and how we are a new intro to and most of the things we are going to be doing it's going to have some certain kind of stuff that it's going to be different from what we are doing right now and the tutorials it's really going to be sweet amazing and you guys are going to grab so much from it as long as you guys keep supporting the channel by hitting that subscribe button so see you guys in my next video and don't forget to practice on how to paint shadows and highlights